Is it really time to move to .NET Core 3.0? We're going to talk about that right now. It's hard to believe that .NET is nearly 18 years old. The very first public release of the framework was back in 2002. And over the years, it has become the foundation of much of Windows development, and with the release of .NET Core in 2014, .NET Core launched with a limited set of features, but has rapidly started to catch up with the .NET framework. Where it was initially for console and web applications, it's now ready for the desktop and for GUI code. So we're not far from Microsoft shifting all of the .NET support to .NET Core, and the .NET standard libraries that provide a common set of APIs for your code across various .NET implementations, including Xamarin and Unity, being the big option. So the question that I had from many of you is, I just have this huge code base that now that we've spent all these years and time on. Should we move to the very next thing that Microsoft comes out with every year, every six months, every release? When do we know that it's really time to move from .NET framework to .NET Core. Is .NET Core ready for prime time? That's what we're going to answer today. Let's talk about .NET Framework. Right now, the current version is 4.8. Microsoft may not have directly said it, but it's become increasingly clear that over the past couple of years, .NET Framework is on its way out. So most of the attention has been focused by the company on ensuring that .NET Core is faster and stronger and able to be more capable of doing all the things that you got as a benefit from the .NET framework, but in a much more performant package. I've certainly done most of my own development using .NET framework and have been reluctant to embrace .NET Core only because just like anything else that comes out, I'm not quite sure if it really has the chops to do the kind of work that I need to do. Now, I'm on the fence about whether or not .NET Framework is going to be dead, being the only framework in Microsoft's .NET family that supports desktop applications. But it's only a matter of time before .NET Core would be ready to replace it, and it looks like it's finally happening. .NET Core 3.0, most of the new applications should be done in them. I mean, the primary application types from .NET Framework are supported where there's something that was not ported over to .NET Core, but all the future investment coming from the company is going to go into it. But in typical Microsoft fashion, .NET Framework 4.8 and all its predecessors will not actually go away for good. It'll continue to be supported for many years to come. That framework is the backbone of many really important applications, especially in enterprise markets. What's going to happen going forward is really interesting because what follows after .NET Core 3.0 will not be .NET Core 4.0, but rather .NET 5, making it clear that there will only be one .NET framework going forward for everyone to use in future applications. And if you're wondering why it's not called .NET 4, well, that'd be too similar to .NET Framework 4, which is what we have right now, 4.8. So instead of making it confusing, they're just going to call the entire new ecosystem .NET 5. And that should be coming out in the year 2020. So what does that mean for enterprise applications? What that means right now is that any new pieces that you do should most likely be architected in .NET Core 3, and I'll tell you why. A lot of the new front-end options like Blazor, both Blazor Server and Blazor WebAssembly, are being made as an option in 3.0. WebAssembly is only in beta right now in 3.0, but Blazor Server is completely functioning and running. And this gives you and your team an opportunity to start moving things over and playing with what that means in your day-to-day -day development cycles. There are loads of major changes in the official blog posts and documentation that Microsoft has on their site, but the gist of it is that there's a lot now that .NET Core 3.0 brings to the table. If you're coming from a .NET framework background or even an earlier version of .NET Core, you need to consider a switch. There's support for F Sharp, better support for .NET Standard 2.1, much better JSON performance. One that made me really excited was the lowered memory consumption, because I have certainly seen my fair share of memory hogs for some of the applications out there. There's also a lot smaller SDK installs, improved Docker support, there's Linux support for it now, and HTTP2 support. One of the most exciting 
things for me and anybody who's interested in the way that C Sharp has grown, C Sharp 8 has arrived alongside .NET Core 3.0 and is only supported in full if you use .NET Core 3. So it, there's so many awesome features they've really refined about the language. If you're interested in C Sharp 8 at all, consider making the leap. As you might expect, .NET Core 3 does not come without proper IDE support. Microsoft has released Visual Studio 2019 uh, and Visual Studio for Mac that both support uh, not just C Sharp 8, but .NET Core 3. And if you're looking forward to .NET 5, it's meant to basically replace .NET Framework in full and turn things up a notch on the cross-platform and feature front that a lot of people have come to love in .NET Core. So as much information as there is out there, the biggest question that a lot of people would have is, is this easy to migrate? Microsoft has actually created a couple of documents uh, on their documentation website about what it means to migrate to .NET Core 3.0 from an earlier version of .NET Core, like uh, .NET Core 2.2, or from the .NET framework. Of course, there are going to be many articles that you might stumble upon, several of which you will see right here on the Okta channel. But one thing to keep in mind is that third time seems to really be the charm. Now I think .NET Core 3.0 really is ready for prime time in almost every aspect. And this is the time where you need to start formulating a plan of what your architecture on your applications should look like. Make your migration plan. and. That is definitely something that we're gonna go over to kind of help you and what that means and what that looks like syntactically to move from like an earlier version of .NET Core to this new version in terms of authentication. What is that gonna take? Because there are so many new classes and new libraries that you get to take advantage of that are far more performant and clear that you don't have to add in a bunch of dependencies for. They really have tightened the ship a lot when it comes to 3.0. But when it comes to .NET Framework, remember, it's not going away tomorrow. They will still support it for a while. But wouldn't you want to have the improvements of the language? Wouldn't you want to have the ability to do every aspect of an application from the server all the way to a front-end site being run completely doing C Sharp without having to do JavaScript? There's so many options that has truly been kind of mind-boggling to me how much the open source community has done for .NET in general. This is the time, if you were considering uh, just even looking at it, this is the time to play around and see what that means for your particular enterprise scenario. So the last question I have for you is, what are you looking to do next? Are you wanting to completely rewrite what you have in an existing situation from scratch? Or are you wanting to just create something new or perhaps a new component to an already segregated ecosystem that you control? Either way, this is the time where you need to invest education and a little bit more planning into what a migration would look like. Yes, in many cases, a rewrite will be necessary, but Microsoft is there to help you along the way. And of course, your friends here at Okta will definitely be giving you a lot of tutorials about that. Until next time, stay curious.